podcast for creatives, the makers, doers, thinkers who get their energy from within, who enjoy their time alone, and who are most creative when working solo. Today's guest is kind of a big deal, and not just because she's a New York Times best-selling author, or because she was voted as one of The Guardian's top 100 creative professionals of the year, or any of her other awards or accolades. Joanna Penn is a big freaking deal because it was her podcast, The Creative Pen, that was responsible for me even entertaining the idea that one day, maybe I too could have a podcast? Okay, so maybe that's just why she's a big deal to me. But if you aren't already a fan of JP, her books, her blog, or her podcast, then I'm willing to bet by the end of this show you will be. We're going to dig deep into whether introversion helped or hindered Joanna's career, tips for working on a creative project as an introvert, advice on collaboration for creatives, and tips for surviving networking events and conferences. Okay, so without further ado, here is the interview. Hi, Joanna. Hello, Kat. Thanks for having me on the show. No, thank you for coming on. Um, This has been something that I've wanted to, I've wanted to talk to you for a long, long time. Um, And you've been podcasting for a while now? Since uh, since 2009, believe it or not, I'm on like episode 340 something. <laughs> yeah, that that's a while, definitely. No, so that's amazing. Um, and I don't need to ask you if you're an introvert because I already know that you are indeed one of the rarest types. Uh, INFJ, am I right? Yes, I am indeed an INFJ, and I actually was just on your website looking at your T-shirts, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy myself an <laughs> INFJ T-shirt because <laughs> what's so interesting though, it is a rare type. But if you ask authors, um, and I'm I'm an author, is um, it's it's incredibly common amongst authors to be INFJ. There you go. So this is something that fascinates me, uh, and I wasn't going to get too into it, but how different um, personality types do tend to do certain careers and I've, I'm an INTJ and I see a lot of people I mean like people like Tim Ferriss I'm like everything these people say I'm like yes yes I get it and mm. you know are we slightly autistic it's possible <laughs> but it, it's really it's really good fun to kind of have that conversation with somebody and it does sound a bit horoscopy at the same time uh, but there is a great book called I think it's called Your Creative Type and it mm. talks about how different types um get attracted to different creative uh things anyway yeah well no I I think it is interesting and you and I both um like Susan Cain's book Quiet hopefully everyone listening has read Quiet if you haven't read it um but it's interesting because that book um you know helped me start down the journey of realizing I was a in I was an introvert and you know really understand who I was and then doing the Myers-Briggs thing I'm just uh, kicking myself I didn't do it much earlier on in my life because like you say it sounds a bit horoscopy but it's not because it's not you know it's it's different um and you know it's kind of it seems more scientific in a way but it it really helped me to kind of understand a lot of and accept a lot of who I am um you know we I know your bit of your story as well and you spend so long kind of forcing yourself into a box of how other or how you think that you should behave in certain situations or like both of us have been in open plan offices and kind of just gone why why is this not good for me why why is this a terrible working environment like I was on uh, one of my offices there were 400 people on this office floor and we weren't allowed headphones you're just like how can businesses do that and so but I think understanding how why you end up feeling this way or a a bit more about yourself you know anything that helps you know yourself Mm -hmm. um I'm sure you can be on the cusp like you know like you can be on a on the cusp of a horoscope you can be on the cusp of a personality type as well (laughs) absolutely and a lot of people do talk about the whole ambivert thing um Mm. but that's what I think it all comes down to with all of these personality type quizzes because there are plenty of them out there but the more self-knowledge I think we have I mean probably to a point but it's all going to be helpful right and just knowing Mm. that you're not alone and that there are other people and it's you know there are other people who are going through that so. Yeah, and I think it's interesting that ambivert thing. Um, you know, I know some people insist they are, but I actually, uh, I think it was Beth Bulow I was talking to who does the introvert entrepreneur, um, and uh, I think it's it's using extrovert as more like a verb. So, for example, with public speaking, you might decide I'm going to extrovert today yes. <laughs> instead of you know being you know I'm a I'm an ambivert. I am an introvert who sometimes chooses to extrovert, as in behave like like someone who is naturally um, good with 
uh, out with people and, and energetic surrounded by people and and so I think that that's a good way to think about it sometimes is okay I, I'm very happy introvert but sometimes you have to extrovert in order to participate <laughs> in see. a public life <laughs> I I'm all about claiming those words as verbs and I feel like it's kind of like getting dressed like there are some days I will just wear sweats and there are other days where I will dress like a real girl and you know it's it's all down to the situation completely yeah no I agree um but I was just interesting how you think or if this is a thing at all but has your introversion helped and or hindered you in your creative career well, I think I think for for writers particularly, being an introvert is probably a superpower. Although it's amazing how many musicians I meet who are also introverts mm. and actors and you know painters. And I think there's a um, to to create from yourself, you do have to spend time alone. Now, I absolutely you know we can talk about co-writing and and co-creation and and absolutely creating in in bigger groups is good, but. Um, certainly for writers, um, novelists, I write fiction as well as nonfiction, you need time alone to create. So yes. if you're not happy alone, if you're not energized alone, which for you and I is, you know, the definition of an introvert, someone who is energized by being alone. Um, I think if you can't be happy doing that, then, um, you know, it, it, it's difficult to have a writing career if you need people all the time. So I think that is actually a, a superpower. And, you know, most mornings I'm at the cafe at seven. And even though I'm in a cafe, I put my noise cancelling headphones on. And mm. these are amazing, by the way, if people are like, um, and the cafe is not like an open plan office. I sit around the corner out of sight of everyone with my noise cancelling headphones, like in my book. Do not disturb. And, <laughs> yeah, basically, I, it's, not a, it's not a chatty time. Um, but yeah, the noise cancelling headphones have been really good for me um also because I travel a lot and you know noise and too much stimulation can be very very tiring for introverts so um these are Bose headphones um they're awesome and real really great investment and so that's what I I do when I'm creating and then also I think these days introversion is can also be a real strength for um online marketing because you can be alone and run a business online you know I have a team as such, um, free, a team of freelancers, uh, but I don't work physically with them. Um, so I run my business online by email and uh, Google Docs and all that. And I can do marketing uh, on Twitter and uh, email and I don't have to go out there at all if I don't want to. Um, you know, I do sometimes. But basically, I think now with the Internet, we're so we're just so lucky to be at this time in history where being an introvert is almost like a superpower for a creative entrepreneur. It is. And it's interesting you talk about that uh, working remotely with people. For me, location dependence, um, independence rather, is something <laughs> that's really important to me. And I wonder if that is a trait with a lot of introverts, that it's not so much that we're always uh, seeking new places. It's just this idea that we don't have to be um, confined into a singular place. Yeah, I actually think it, there's a different scale of um, people who like staying in one place to people who have um, what I call itchy foot syndrome, or my husband does. But and then someone emailed me and said, "You realise that sounds like a disease." Like, no, 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 <laughs> you get some cream for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In America, I don't think itchy feet is such a big term in America. <laughs> so um, people with wanderlust uh, might be a better way of putting it. But it's in, I actually think that's a different scale to the introvert extrovert scale sure. and the shy outgoing scale. Um, you know, so I'm a, a, a not shy introvert who loves traveling. Um, my husband is a not shy introvert who prefers to stay at home. <laughs> yes. Um, you briefly mentioned collaboration there, and I really wanted to dig into that, actually, because uh, you did collaborate with a previous guest on the show, Jay Thorne, and some others. Uh, and I'd really love to hear about that experience, because that just sounded um, really, really fascinating to me. Yeah, so, well, yeah, Jay is the king of, of collaboration, uh, I think because he comes from a, a music background and, you know, musicians generally collaborate in bands and, and all that. And so it's really interesting as writers. So Jay um, said, you know, a few years ago, we should co-write something. And I resisted for ages until I did, um, it's uh, on a site called masterclass.com, a, a brilliant um courses by really famous people James Patterson did did one on writing 
And even if you don't like James Patterson's books, he's a hell of a storyteller. So I did it and he talked about collaboration and co-writing. And, you know, he, he used the Lennon and McCartney idea, the fact that two people can create something completely different from the individuals alone. And he co-writes with lots of people. And so I was like, wow, that's amazing. So I said to Jay, all right, let's do it. Now, Jay, we'd met on Skype before but Jay was in America I'm in the UK and we wrote um, our book Risen Gods basically without even speaking to each other the whole time uh, we did everything on Google Docs uh, which is amazing for collaboration and essentially because he was he's in the US five hours behind I would get up do my words and then he would get up, you know, five hours later and do his words. And we finished a book in like a month. Wow. <laughs> that was amazing. So that was a couple of years ago. And then this year, March 2017, he was like, hey, how about we get on a train in Chicago and go down to New Orleans and write a book together? Not just two of us, but four of us. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was it was very it was an interesting week because, you know, I'm an introvert. Jay is more of an introvert than I am. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the other two authors also super introverts. So basically we we were on a train together for I think it was like 19 hours and then we got to New Orleans and we basically spent most of the week separately <laughs> but mainly you, you collaborate I think as, as a writer by doing like having a Google Drive and and doing things without actually being there in person it's just not necessary. Well it's the best of all worlds you get to kind of have this experience a shared experience with people when traveling so, I mean I do a lot of solo travel but it is it's always missing that thing you can't turn around to somebody and be like isn't that cool um, mm. so you have that option but you still got to do your own thing yeah exactly and I, I also what was so interesting I mean Risen Gods and, and the other book we did American Demon Hunters Sacrifice which was just a lot of fun <laughs> kind of urban fantasy let's just be clear you know urban fantasy um, but they it was interesting because um, so many of the ideas were not something that you would have come up with on your own so uh, I think in 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 those cases it becomes you know very valuable to do these sort of collaborative things and, and Jay and I also have a book on co-writing and collaboration that we that we wrote together as part of that experience um, and he's he's done so many collaborations and I think one of his big points is a lot of the time it doesn't work so um, you know I, I think it's very important to be careful who you try and collaborate with uh, and especially you know for example <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've just started collaborating with somebody new and you know I, I get a text message oh hi can you can you talk now and mm -hmm. you know as introverts that's not what we do you don't just like I don't get on not the phone spontaneously <laughs> no, my god <laughs> I, I know I'm like no you actually have to schedule a phone call yes. and she's like what I'm like no it doesn't work if you just kind of try and interrupt me and things so this is a big tip this is a good tip for in introverts doing collaboration like you book your meetings where you do stuff like this you and I book this time online and you that's fine because you can prepare yourself for that but if someone ever texts you or or phones you like I never answer the phone randomly you 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 basically lie and you say I'm working in a library today or yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sorry I'm doing interviews can we schedule a time you know you have permission to lie about what you're doing so you don't have to answer the phone a hundred percent and sometimes that is easier I mean I'm doing a collaboration with somebody at the moment and she's an extrovert but she totally gets that so we've had mm. that conversation it's kind of like I need to tell you something um, yeah. and, and gets that but I, I totally understand that that isn't always possible and sometimes you do just need to be like um, yeah my calendar I just need to yeah you just need to schedule <laughs> schedule things but I think that you know that again is a, a sort of um, it's understanding how you work and how yes. other people work um, you know and and m like managing other people and your relationship to other people is a huge part of creative business um, or being a creative in general you do have to manage your energy and manage other people's at the same time mm -hmm. so um, you just you know get to know how you do things for example um, um, this is the second interview I'm doing today and I will never schedule more than two interviews yes. on, on, on an afternoon because, you know, my energy has to be high for me to be alert and, and give to your audience. And so that's really important. So if you make sure you schedule things, then you can um, keep your energy measured uh, over time. I talk a lot about this and having these kind of um, rough principles like for me if I schedule two things back to back that's fine but a third thing then mm. I have like a meltdown and one of those things ends up going wrong so it's yeah. having this kind of buffer time is really helpful. 
Yeah, and let's, um, uh, you know, talking about pro professional speaking, public speaking, um, multi-day conferences are an absolute killer um, for for authors, uh, well, for introverts, let's say, <laughs> in general, I mean, for authors, it's, you know, it's crazy. So I'm going to a conference in America in a couple of, um, a week and a half's time, and it's like seven days. And mm. every time I've done this conference, I've ended up leaving early, like actually changing my flight and coming home early, because I haven't managed it properly. And normally I wouldn't do do this but um you know I'm I'm up for this award and all the stuff so I have to go and then and it's great and it's exciting but what I have to do like this is another tip is you have to like get the schedule beforehand and um make sure you like ideally get a hotel room in the same conference venue um and this is the same even if it's like two days it can be really hardcore and then make sure you schedule your breaks um so that you can get away from the event um at different times uh, so and schedule a, a way to like off time as in don't do any um, interviews or anything the day after or the day before and just really make sure that you you schedule enough spare time to recharge your energy um, after you do these types of things. It's such good advice and I, I just think it's also giving yourself that permission I think a lot of us think oh well I just need to like power through but it's mm. not worth it it just isn't worth it so we well, also often you can't you can't power through right. I mean you know it was so funny I was at another author event what's nice is that many authors have the same thing and, and there's a little private Facebook group and we were all meant to be down in the bar and there was a conversation going on on the Facebook group which was everyone going I think maybe we should all just stay in our rooms this <laughs> evening and like <laughs> everyone was just going oh I don't really want to go out in public and and so yeah this kind of giving yourself permission um sometimes yeah you do have to force it especially if you're being paid to speak or you're doing an, an event like you have to brute force it but um I don't think that you can last very long doing that which is why <laughs> my husband is always like oh I know you'll change your flight and come home early <laughs> <laughs> one thing that I I did want to mention on the back of the whole collaboration thing is marketing because this is something that a lot of my audience and myself included marketing ourselves is something that can be very difficult whether you're just a creative but specifically creative introverts one thing that I found that makes it easier is when you're doing it with someone else I just wonder if that's been your experience when it comes to uh, like working with other people collaborating and when you feel like you're part of something bigger that it becomes easier uh, I'm, I mean that's not been my experience because I've I've done most of my stuff on my own I yeah. think um, authors particularly do a lot on their own um, and because I'm an independent author I don't work with a publisher um, so I, I kind of do things myself um, you know I, I know that some authors do sort of online launch parties with other authors or like I, I do things like bundles with other authors yeah. but we all still promote separately um, so th th just on the back on the personality thing, there is, I, I believe, some evidence around men and women that men find it easier to promote themselves and women find it easier to promote a group um, oh, interesting. activity. Yeah, there's a, a book on, um, I think it's by a woman called Katty Kay. I remember her name, but I think the book's on confidence or something like that it, for women. It's, it's in there. Um, and so this kind of it's easier to promote the collective than yourself. Um, I think, again, it's probably on an, on another thing. But but for me, the marketing, my best approach to marketing is really to try and be useful, yeah. <laughs> and which is what you're doing with your podcast and, and, and trying to be helpful and, and provide, you know, information if you're a nonfiction author. And then with fiction, it's like providing entertainment and escape from people's lives. And and then it's not about like push, 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 buy my book. It's like, you know, here's a here's a, you know, an adventure that's on sale or here's something you can escape your your miserable job with at the, at the weekend or, you know, here's um, a useful for podcast on this topic so I think reframing marketing around just sharing what you love with people who want to hear about it <laughs> that's kind yeah. of how I think about it and I think um seeing where these things overlap so you can definitely share what you're into without it being almost related at all to what you're um selling or promoting or whatever like for example I know that you are a fan of graveyards from your Instagram feed <laughs> <laughs> and like I love that and it does actually go with your um, fiction books but it you know if somebody came at your Instagram page thinking 
I who's, found... who's this person? Yeah. Well, it's it's more just like if I found you just from your podcast, then maybe I wouldn't have expected it. But it's this added dimension, and mm. I think at first it's, this was definitely the case for myself. I was a little bit scared about showing these more personal sides because you didn't want to be the person who's just showing a picture of their tuna sandwich. But I realised that it's this personal touch that people really enjoy. Yeah, you're totally right. And I mean, the graveyard thing, I it, it took me like four years to talk about that in public because I thought <laughs> I was weird. Turns out I'm what's known as a vanilla goth, which, you know, if, <laughs> if you look at me, I don't look like a goth. I'm all kind of, you know, vanilla. Um, but I actually like things like tattoos and skulls and black stuff and, you know, dark books and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm happiest when I'm like murdering people in, in my fiction. Um, but it, but it's really interesting to yeah. Again, it's about honesty and knowing yourself and realizing there's other people who are interested in the things um, that you are and attracting like-minded you know people in that way. Yeah, you've done so so much. So obviously we've been talking a little bit about your fiction writing, but also the fact that you are helping other authors. And that takes like courage, obviously, to try different things out. Um, but it also takes courage to stick with something, which you obviously have done, um, especially writing a fiction series. What's been your process in sort of knowing when to pivot, I guess I'd call it in Silicon Valley, um, and mm -hmm. when to stick to something? Well, um, well, the Creative Pen with a double N, which is my website, was my third blog um, which, you know, some people don't realize, but basically I, back in 2008, I wrote my first nonfiction book, um, which is, I rewrote, it's called Career Change. Um, back then it was called Something Different. And the first blog I started was about that one book. Mm. This is a, a fundamental mistake of people who write books <laughs> or creatives in general is don't call your website after the first thing you do because you will change over time. Um, and then the second one um, I started was about kind of learning things on the internet. And uh, again, that you realize that you need to not do stuff if you run out of ideas. Now I run out of ideas for those two things within about three months. Now the creative pen, which has been, I've basically been blogging and podcasting since December, 2008 um, every two days yeah. <laughs> um, and my content's currently scheduled for the next six months so basically I have so there's so much that I want to share on my creative journey that I know that the creative pen and the creative pen as, as the name came to me a lot you know uh, as I could do that site for the rest of my life because I can pivot you know I could become a painter and that website name would still work mm -hmm. for me in the same way that you know you've got you could use yours you know ongoing as well you know and it's not called after one product or one book or yeah. or one definition um so I think that's probably the first thing it's like what if I'm if I'm going to stick with something for the long term like a website like a a thing I want to do with my life it has to be something that you can pay attention to like obsessively for more than three months yes. <laughs> um especially with because with creative work um as as we all know you won't find success very very unlikely you're going to find success with whatever your first thing is your first book your first painting your first song um you know it takes time to actually um to to grow your audience to grow your income uh you know i look back at my first <laughs> one of my first amazon ch uh, checks back in 2009 was for like ten dollars and 44 cents <laughs> But but that making that ten dollars made me realise that I could make more money. So you know by writing more books and all of that type of thing. So um, that's one thing. And then you, you know so you know when to pivot when your own you know sort of it, your own desire to do this stuff starts to wane. So professional speaking is a good example for me. When I started writing nonfiction back in two thousand and six, I thought I was going to be a speaker first like when people say what are you I would say I am a speaker and also an author I thought the speaking would be my primary income as it is for some of my friends you know who, who get paid stacks of money to do speaking but actually and mainly because I think um, well I'm an author now, you know, I'm an author first and my speaking, I cut down, I've cut down and cut down and cut down my speaking. Um, and now I'm only trying to do it like every couple of months in public, but do more podcasts like this because it's so much more sustainable. So, but it's interesting. I didn't 
you know, start a whole career around speaking and not pivot and just run myself into another day job that I hated, I just went, okay, well, look, this is not sustainable for my energy. So I'm going to do far less speaking. I'm going to say no to speaking most of the time. And I'm going to say yes to more books, um, more podcast interviews. And, you know, you, you have to start saying yes and no to these various different things. Um, and there's a really good book I recommend called Deep Work by Cal Newport. Oh, yes. Yeah, great book. And, you know, great book for introverts too, because it's about real focused energy, focused creative energy, um, where you are not distracted. Um, and that really comes down to saying no to the things that don't bring you alive all the things that don't sustain the life you actually want um and it can be hard to know the life you want you know I thought I did want to be a speaker first mm. <laughs> but turns out I actually wanted to be an author so um you know the, there's times to pivot and there's times to to stick it but you do have to keep coming back to that know yourself and you know what you really want yeah and I think you kind of make um a really good example of how you don't have to just stop doing something altogether. Like, it's not like you wake up one day. I mean, in some cases, it kind of is. I know that with when I left my office job, that was a bit of a risky, like, okay, I'm just going to quit. Mm. Um, but with other things, I've kind of phased them out because it doesn't have to be this, like, overnight switch. So yeah, exactly. I think that kind of helps. Um, and another thing you talk about, sorry, I'm going to, like, I have so many questions, but I'm really <laughs> done. <laughs> um, but talking about kind of having a either a five-year plan or having an, an end goal in sight um, in order to sort of work backwards. And I think this is something, like, I, I love that because I'm a proper, like, if I have a goal, then it kind of puts my mind at ease. And mm. I feel like, you know, now I've got a plan and rah, rah. But I think a lot of creatives, at least uh, people I speak to, um, find it very hard to think, first and foremost, that far in the future um, and then work backwards and actually know the steps to do it. Yeah, I think, again, I think whether you're a goal oriented person or not is, again, another personality thing. But sure. I think if you, as a creative introvert, particularly, whatever your chosen thing is or whatever the, the creativity that you're called to, so for me is being an author then um, the goals around that are obviously writing books so in terms of setting bigger goals like I, I have on my wall here 100 books by 50 um, so that's like and, and I'm 42 I'm, well yeah I'm 42 <laughs> so you know and I've got 24 books so I have to ramp it up a bit <laughs> if I'm gonna make it to 100 so and that's that's interesting so if I'm like um, 100 books by 50 it's you know it's a it's a it, it's a goal but it's it's more like I'm creating a body of work um and my inspiration for that is Isaac Asimov um mm -hmm. who actually wrote 400 novels in his life of which only a couple are famous but how do you know the books that are actually going to resonate with people so like how do you know which songs are going to resonate with people um and all the research around creativity is you are a terrible judge of your own work yeah. and the fact the best way to have a hit book or a hit song or a, you know be a famous painter like Picasso but he's a great example is to be prolific so if my creative goals around you know being memorable and leaving something after I die and legacy and everything and then I have income goals like you know I I like being a wealthy creative I'm more of the Picasso and the Damien Hirst idea than or the James Patterson Stephen King multi-millionaire authors you know than I am the sort of Van Gogh, Van Gogh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> type of person <laughs> so there it's like okay so um, like I mentioned that ten dollar payment from Amazon I saw at that point how this would work as scalable income so for every book I write um, every format I put my book out in ebook print you know um, audiobook every country it publishes in um, you know every person who buys it is another little trickle in my river of multiple streams of income so I think if you want to have bigger goals the way to break it down is just to look at your creative projects so it all comes down to this morning I went to the cafe at seven o'clock and I wrote 2,000 words and that you can actually just break down a massive plan like 100 books by 50 down to I went to the cafe and mm -hmm. I wrote 2000 words if I don't go to the cafe 
like at least five days a week and write 2000 words, I won't make that goal. And I could completely break down the maths, but I'm also a believer that some of those will be co-written. So those things will pop up. I don't have to micromanage everything. What I do have to micromanage is my daily schedule, as we've talked about, the fact that I am actually creating rather than just talking about creating, which (laughs) is, you know, often can be a problem for for people. Um, So hopefully that will give people more of a clue. And then, you know, to be honest, if you just measure your or just monitor your what you say yes and no to and how much you're actually producing in your creative body of work, then you will make those goals. You will make the six figure, multi six figure, seven figure income if you want it. You'll make that body of work that will leave a legacy um, if you just focus on creating uh, every day. Yeah, I would say like equally to how much um, I recommend setting goals and like mini goals and all of this stuff, but also Um, equally to reflecting on this stuff so having Mm. time at the end of every day week month to kind of say like okay I did manage to do this and I obviously wasted some time around here um, yeah, or I've changed my mind. Um, yes. You know, like this year I was going to do a, uh, I, and I do every year on uh, January the 1st, I write my goals on my blog for the year uh, and then I reflect on that in, after Christmas every year. Great accountability. Um, yeah, it's really amazing accountability. This is another good tip. Start a podcast or a blog and put your goals on your blog. And one of my goals this year was to do a, a sort of premium hardback journal, like a moleskin mm-hmm. or a Luke term, if people know that, um, which I love. And I spent ages going into how I would do that with people and getting quotes. And, and then in the end, the, the costings just didn't make it worthwhile with what I wanted as a writer like if I'd have been willing to you know compromise on the paper quality or different things but I just went you know what I'm actually going to take that off my goal list because it you know it's so much effort it won't make any money and I won't have the product I want so I'm going to take that off my list so you can do that too (laughs) yes it is it's allowed and what's interesting about that is you don't know that in a couple of years time a great opportunity around that might come about and it can happen but Mm. it's kind of like leaving room open and that's when I get a bit woo woo and I'm like yeah you know the universe will let it happen (laughs) but um (laughs) taking the pressure off yourself to Mm. and something else I've been doing is uh as well as like committing to kind of like little daily things like recently I was getting on Facebook live because that was a Mm -hmm. fear of mine but knowing full well that I would really like to um make more videos and improve public speaking skills uh so that was like a little daily thing I could do Mm. um but also asking people who have actually done that thing that you've you want to do Uh, and I think a lot of introverts we tend to think that we have to do everything ourselves and don't even consider asking yeah definitely and I I think the um, as you grow your creative business it's really important to start thinking um how can I find other people um to help me do this and actually it's great again having a podcast is awesome because um what i've talked about my challenges and in working with virtual assistants for example and then end up asking my audience and my my primary virtual assistant came from my audience um and she's an introvert too and and we understand each other because she's part of my audience so it can be very good to try and be honest about what what you need and um you know how things work and and then often um you know the universe will provide as such yeah yeah completely um so with that uh I would love to know just first of all what's next for you what have you got planned I know obviously you've got the states that's probably next thing on your list (laughs) <laughs> well, I'm I, I'm actually writing this um, a, a novel, a new series. So I'm like fifteen thousand words into this book, which is a completely new world, new characters, new everything. So that's the primary thing on my mind, which is uh, really it's in that really fun stage where I don't really know what it's going to be, and I'm just you know writing that first draft, which is quite freeing, and I'm doing a lot of dictation, and so that's kind of my creative side. And um, New York is a the a thriller fest for international. Thr- thriller writers so that's quite exciting um but I've also got a book launch next week uh how to market a book so if people oh, are fantastic. interested in that is a, a lot on book marketing but actually book marketing is pretty similar in many ways to small business or any kind of creative marketing so um that's around um yeah so uh, I normally have a, some kind of fiction and non-fiction thing um going on at the same time because they kind of use different parts of your brain yeah I think that's really great I think 
uh, at least for myself, I've been very much in the nonfiction world um, recently, including how I consume uh, content. So mm. it's it's it is nice. It does seem to uh, be a nice balance to have both of those things. Mm, it is, yeah. It makes me kind of creatively fulfilled at the same time as helping other people. <laughs> yes, the altruistic side, which apparently INFJs are known for. <laughs> ah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Saving the world. <laughs> yeah. I always wanted, what was funny is when I was like six, 16 or something, I wanted to um, be Boutros Boutros Ghali, who was the <laughs> the head of the UN at the time, the UN Secretary General. And, um, you know, was that was always what I wanted to do with my life was like save, save Middle East peace. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Which kind of makes me laugh now because, yeah, so, uh, so now I just write books about Israel and religious <laughs> religious thrillers. <laughs> yeah, we could we could use you still <laughs> like, yeah great. exactly yeah that, that would have been a tough job I mean yeah oh, it's right. been, been going on for a while <laughs> yes. um so finally tell the lovely listeners where they can find you uh yeah sure so um at the creative pen.com pen with a double n and you'll find the author 2.0 blueprint there which is a free ebook video course um on writing publishing book marketing and creative business and i have a podcast the creative pen podcast you can come over and um have a listen to that it's every week on a monday and my fiction is at jf pen.com um f for francis or on all of the usual bookstores so good thank you so much that's been an awesome chat and i'm probably gonna have to ask you on for a second at some point because there is so much more i have to ask you <laughs> but thank don't you. worry thanks for having me cat bye Tired of the everyday routine? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... What's up, guys? My name is James Scully, host of Breaking Walls. Are you into on-the-scene reporting around New York? Conversations with luminaries centered around helpful topics or interactive looks at important moments in radio's history? If so, subscribe to Breaking Walls on iTunes or SoundCloud by searching for Breaking Walls or The Wallbreakers, and we'll catch you on the flip side.